Hello everybody, Wireless Jeff here. Today we're gonna to talk about FirstNet and what it is and what it's intended to do and why it was conceived and how it will help the end user, the public safety officer, fireman, or police officer in the field. Okay, so the whole point of this conversation is to talk to you about why, number one, why was FirstNet even conceived of? And it was conceived of after 9-11 when all the public safety agencies in New York City realized, the different agencies realized that they didn't have a great way to communicate effectively. There was too many things where they didn't talk well with each other. And so, Born out of that, what really is FirstNet? So FirstNet was, the, the idea behind FirstNet was to build an interoperable, reliable, robust communications network that's nationwide, not just citywide, but nationwide, some type of interoperable radio system. And so what they came up with is what's called a broad, it's a broadband wireless network, a nationwide broadband wireless network that will allow public safety agencies across the entire country to talk effectively with each other. Now, some of the myths behind this is that this is a voice system, and it's not. The operable word in what I said there is it's a public safety broadband network. So this network initially is designed to transmit data, video, text messages, maps, those kind of things. It's not designed for voice. And um, they put this out to bid, and several companies bid on it, and AT&T was the winning bidder to build the FirstNet network for uh, the government. So, where are we at with that now? Right now, we're at a point where states can opt in or opt out of, of this network. And at this point, half of the states in the country have opted into the network. Uh, that's a good thing because we need everybody to comply with this and want to want to build this thing as a nationwide network. So, uh, you will hear the term um, band 14, which is uh, 20 megahertz bandwidth within the 700 megahertz hertz band of frequencies and that is being dedicated by the government as dedicated channels for public safety and, and when I mean dedicated what they call what they're calling that is a preemptive um, network that gives public safety users priority priority over all other users now that kind of happens right now on a cellular network on an LTE cellular network but it's not really preemptive and it's not exclusive and so a, a public safety agency could get bumped off of that network and public safety agencies do now use an LTE uh, modem in the trunk of their vehicles to do things like run license plates and and so it is available but it's not dedicated to public safety and for mission critical communications it has to be dedicated to public safety we have to have priority and preemptive priority over other users on a network like that so first has dedicated those channels for someone to build this system and and it's going to be AT&T who's going to build this network now oddly enough I read something recently that said that that in the beginning and probably even long term what ATT is going to do and this is by their own admission rather than just using this uh, band 14 20 megahertz uh, channels that are dedicated to public safety for the entire network nationwide what they're going to do is they're gonna build this network and deploy it over their existing LTE network and in the areas where capacity, coverage, population is an issue, then they will use the dedicated band 14 frequencies to help enhance their coverage and give them the coverage and capacity they need to be able to give public safety agencies priority over all the other users on the LTE network. Now that's a bit of a change from what people originally said was gonna happen. The whole idea of this was to build an entire network nationwide on those channels dedicated only to public safety. And that eventually will happen, but in the process of building this out, they're gonna do it that way, which I thought that was interesting. So 
In the beginning, what you're going to see happen is the states will opt in and, and AT&T will begin to deploy LTE broadband first net services, which is really wireless data is what it is, in the, in the urban areas and then the suburban areas and then finally the rural areas. And it's interesting that they, they've made a commitment to build out 60% coverage of the United States over the next two years and 80% coverage over the next, I think, three years and 100% coverage over the next five years, which I don't see that happening. It's, it's, uh, if you can imagine that uh, AT&T has 40,000 cell sites across the country that now run LTE and they don't have 100% coverage, you get into areas, canyons and whatever. So it will happen where they build the network in the urban areas first and then slowly get out to the rural areas. So what does this mean for a public safety guy, a fire guy, a police guy on the street? If you've heard the term first net, you don't know what it means. There's been a lot of fluff. There was some interesting videos that were put out that, that showed police officers wearing this little curved glass screen on their wrist that was showing maps and um, yeah, that, that stuff's not going to happen for a long time. Initially, it's going to be for data services like I said before, maps, texting, coordination. Uh, eventually though, and this is where the hook comes in, a lot of people and a lot of public safety agencies and a lot of cities and counties are under the impression that FirstNet is going to provide voice services, that it will replace what a traditional walkie-talkie or two-way radio is, and that's not accurate. Uh, voice over LTE, which they call VOLTE, voice over LTE, is something that won't come for many years. The technology is there right now in the cellular world, but there hasn't been any standards adopted for voice over LTE yet. The standards aren't written, um, and therefore the manufacturers, the Motorola's, the Kenwoods, the Tates, the Harris's of the world, they really haven't, uh, they, they don't have the ability to produce handsets that will take advantage of full LTE voice over LTE technology yet because the standards aren't there. So the idea that uh, FirstNet is going to replace traditional LMR, P25, two-way radios uh, for voice communications, that's not going to happen for a long time. One of the things that's so critical about voice communications is in, in public safety applications, we do what's called one-to-many, not one-to-one. -one. So on a cell phone, I call you, but on a two-way radio, I push a button, I talk to my entire crew. Um, that kind of technology and the level of coverage and the level of local interoperability that the current P25 uh, two-way radio systems deliver is pretty darn good. So uh, in the long run, we'll get, we'll get to the point where those handsets, next generation handsets, next generation mobile radios from the major manufacturers will start to integrate LTE into their radios. But as it being a voice thing, that's coming a long way down the road. Okay, so here are some of the other points to consider and maybe a brief summarization of what I talked about. One of the critical things that happened in interoperability of public safety communications, and this is why the P25 standard, which if you've heard that term around, most public safety guys are using P25 radios, that's why they cost a couple thousand dollars a piece, um, was to, to make sure that different agencies could effectively talk to each other in the event of a critical situation disaster. And, and P25 did that pretty well. It laid down some standards so that not one manufacturer, Motorola, Harris, Tate, one of those guys could develop a, a, a pretty much a system that nobody else could talk on. That's what P25 did for us. What it didn't do for us was one of the biggest problems with interoperability is the difference in frequencies. Most, in, in California anyhow, most fire agencies are on VHF radios, most uh, public safety are on UHF or now 800 megahertz radios on a countywide system. So even though the word interoperability thrown around, can the fire guys still talk to the police guys, still talk to the sheriff? Not always because they're on different frequencies. Now if they've gone on to an 800 meg system and they're all talking together, great. So how does that relate to FirstNet? FirstNet was the idea of, like I said, to take that to a national level so that there's an underpinning 
of a nationwide broadband network that will allow broadband services, data, video, texting, along with voice channels, voice over LTE, nationwide broadband network for all agencies all across the country. And it, it's a good start and it's a good thing to have. Um, it, it won't come to fruition for a long time, but we've got federal funding to build this. It's a, it's a great step forward in where public safety communications are going. And so for the end user in the field using radios now, you're probably still gonna be using that same radio or same type of radio that you're using for at least the next three to five years before handset manufacturers catch up, the LTE standards are put into place, and FirstNet actually begins to offer voice over internet services and some of the cooler ideas like actual inner, inner uh, um, you know, interagency trading of maps and data and things like that. So that's where we're at. Great start. A lot of uh, states opting in. AT&T has the bandwidth to do this. Um, I think it's a great idea. I, I think it's going to take a while to make this thing happen and make it built. But uh, that's my opinion on it and my attitudes towards it and what I think about it. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening. If any of you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Wireless Jeff out.